Hey guys, Trevor here from Let Us Drone. Today I want to talk to you about Active Track. It's one very popular flight mode by DJI. So I'll go ahead and give you a walkthrough of how to enable Active Track, the different modes that we have in Active Track, and give you a couple tips on how to safely use it so you don't end up flying your drone into a tree. So the first thing you need to do is take off. You cannot enable Active Track until you launch the drone. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please right. check it on the map. Send just a little ways. Here we are. So from this point, we can go ahead and access our intelligent flight mode menu. That is that little remote control there on the left hand side of the screen. I'll tap on that. There we are. And then we see the intelligent flight modes. Active track, top right hand corner, we select that. So we have a couple options at this point. Uh, DJI has selected a few objects that are automatically recognized. It, the app can pick them up, such as people or boats, I think bicycles as well, and some animals. So since I am indeed a person, I can tap on myself. There we are, and it's identified me as a person. Good job, DJI. I can hit go, so now the drone is tracking me. I can go ahead and walk backward, and the drone will fly at me. There we go, I can walk towards the drone. Now you have to enable backward flying in the settings menu if you want the drone to be able to fly backward. There's been a lot of instances where people have flown their drone into things flying backward because they were using active track and they were on a bike or something and <laughs> they couldn't stop quick enough. So DJI makes you select backward flying. All right, and then I can walk any which way and the drone is gonna follow me. Cool. Uh, now, the drone is going to follow me now. I'm walking away from it, here. Okay, and you can control how far you want the drone to be away from you at this point. So if I decide I want to ascend a little higher, I can do that. You see here I'm going up in elevation, the drone's still going to track me. I can descend, the drone's still going to track me. Okay, and then I can circle around me. Very nice. Ooh, ah, uh, okay, I can go the other way. Very good. I can choose to bring the drone closer to me. It's going to get pretty loud. I apologize for that sound. I can bring the drone back. All right, you get the point. One last thing I want to point out here, that little circle in the center of the screen, I can tap that and either drag it to the right or left and the drone will actually circle me you see here and that little 34 you see right now that's how fast it goes up to 100% so you get up to 100% it's really gonna cruise I hope there's nothing behind me alright we'll do a full 360 here Okay, so here we are. There's Active Track. Now I want to point out that if I wanted to track something that the app didn't automatically recognize, I could trace that item. So for example, if I tap on Active Track again, I can trace this spot of grass right here. <laughs> and the drone, if I hit go, is going to trace that spot of grass. Well, it's going to try to. I should have picked an object that was a little easier for the drone. Yeah, it's indeed it is tracking that spot of grass. So if you wanted to track something that wasn't recognized um, by the drone, that's how you do it. You just trace a box around it. Okay, we're going to exit because this is really confusing me and the drone. Get me back in the frame here. There I am. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next mode here. We have profile on the right-hand side of the screen. If I tap on profile, which I'll do now, it gives you a quick description of what profile mode is. You can read that if you want. All right, now what this is gonna do is get my profile view. So I can go ahead and walk this way. And instead of following behind me like it did in regular active track mode, 
it's going to follow from the side. So I can carry on a conversation with a camera on the drone and it looks a little better because I'm actually talking to the camera, not talking behind me where the drone would be in regular active track. So that's profile mode, kind of cool. You can, again, control uh, the yaw, roll, pitch in profile mode. The next option we have, go back to active track, tap on myself again, is Spotlight. Okay, so what is Spotlight? I'll go ahead and select it and describe as I go. Spotlight mode, there's a description. Yes, very good. Okay, what's gonna happen here? I can walk toward the drone and the drone is not going to move backward like it did before. See this? It's probably going to get really loud. I apologize for that. So the idea... Walk this way. The drone is not going to move in spotlight mode. The camera will move, the gimbal will move, to keep me in frame. Okay? But the drone will not actually change direction. So I can walk away from the drone. It's not and we can go pretty far away. Let's walk around. 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 Let's you can enable obstacle avoidance when you're in active track, but that isn't perfect. Obstacle avoidance fails, so I wouldn't want you to fly the drone backward into something or sideways into something. I have a Phantom 4 Advanced here in front of me, so I don't have rear obstacle avoidance like the Phantom 4 Pro does, or side obstacle avoidance. I have forward and downward. Some drones have five direction obstacle sensing. Some, like mine, only have two. Keep that in mind. But if I were to be walking up a hill, say, the drone will also change its height to compensate. Most of these smaller consumer drones don't have any uh, cameras on the top of them. The Inspire does, but for the Mavics and Phantoms and Sparks, they don't have that. So I've seen videos of people flying their drones into trees or low-hanging objects. Something else I want to point out is that the speed at which the drone can travel while in active track mode changes depending on if you have obstacle avoidance enabled or disabled. With the obstacle avoidance off, the drone will actually travel at a quicker speed than with them on. I think the Spark travels at about six, seven miles an hour with obstacle avoidance on, so that's pretty darn slow. You can turn it off and it's gonna travel up to, I think, um, 13 miles an hour in, in P mode. So if you're tracking something, like a car, that goes too quick for the drone, you can disable the obstacle avoidance, just be, cognizant of the fact that you won't have obstacle avoidance enabled and you could easily run into something. But that's an option for you guys if you want to unleash a little more speed out of the drone. Also a good way to lose the subject that you're tracking in active track is if there are a lot of shadows around, the drone has a tendency to lose uh, th that subject. I'm going to bring the drone a little further away from me. It's probably pretty loud right now with the sound. There we are. So quick directional changes will also cause the drone to lose that subject. All right, guys, so that's a quick tutorial of how to enable active track and the basics of navigating through the menu and the different modes. If you're using active track and it's a, in an area with a lot of trees or power lines, other objects that the drone may crash into. Be very careful. There are a lot of videos out there of people flying smack dab into things while tracking a subject. Another thing is I, I have the Phantom 4 Advanced here, but on a drone like a Spark or a Mavic Air, you can fly the drone with just your phone using Wi-Fi. But one limitation that you have when doing so is the drone will only be able to travel up to 100 meters away from the takeoff spot unless you manually go through the app 
and mark your updated home point. If you're doing something active, like riding a bike, you generally don't have your hands to mess with settings on the app. So that's a limitation of like the Spark or the Mavic Air, like I said. It's only gonna be able to travel up to 100 meters away from the takeoff spot. Also backing up here a sec, the drone needs to be at least six feet off the ground before you can enable active track. So it's gonna give you a warning if you're just a couple feet off the ground and you try to track a subject. Now earlier I mentioned enabling obstacle avoidance. I wanna go ahead and walk you through how to do that in the DJI GO 4 app. There are a couple boxes that we need to make sure are checked before using active track. So if you tap in the right hand corner, it's gonna bring up the general settings and then the sensors, second one down there. If I scroll down a bit, enable backward flying. So we go ahead and tap on that. And just below that, enable obstacle avoidance in active track. Those are a couple important settings that you are probably gonna to wanna to go through. All right guys, so this is a pretty quick tutorial on how to use the active track for a more in depth guide. I wrote a blog post and you can find that at letusdrone.com slash active track. Okay. And I talk about all the details and parameters and everything you could possibly want to know in there. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.